Hey gang and welcome to your first step in becoming a black belt in PHP and MySQL. Okay then, so first of all, I just want to address the elephant in the room. Why am I creating this PHP course? Because undoubtedly, some people might be watching this thinking, why are you doing this? Isn't PHP a dead language? And I suppose PHP is like the Marmite of server-side languages. You either love it or you hate it, and it definitely splits opinions. But in my eyes, it's still very, very worthwhile learning as a developer for a few reasons. So first of all, despite what anyone says about it, it's still extremely popular. WordPress, Magento, Drupal, WooCommerce, and many other content management systems and e-commerce platforms, they all still use PHP. And also other sites like Facebook, Tumblr, and Slack, they also use PHP as well. So regardless of any kind of bad press it's had over the years, PHP continues to thrive, and it's still a huge player on the web. Now, secondly, it's a very, very easy to pick up language for beginner web developers, and it's tightly coupled with HTML as well, which is one of the reasons I think it's so popular. It was one of the first programming languages that I started playing with many, many moons ago when I jumped into web development, and it just felt like a natural progression from front end to back end at the time because it was so easy to pick up. And also, a lot of web servers are pre-configured to run PHP, so uploading a PHP site to the internet and getting it running is pretty easy as well. So thirdly, there's a huge and active community of support out there for PHP, which is really helpful for beginners as well and intermediate programmers. Even if a lot more experienced developers don't like PHP as much as other languages, a huge amount of them still use it because PHP makes up a large part of the web, so they're always there for help. And finally, it does make up a large percentage of web developer jobs, which makes it a very nice addition to your academic tool belt as well. I'm also making this course because it's probably been the number one requested tutorial series I've had since starting this channel. There's been a lot of you messaging me and commenting saying can we have PHP tutorials all the time. So that's the why out of the way. Now let's talk about what PHP is and what you'll learn from this course. So PHP is actually a recursive acronym. It stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. So this recursive acronym, it just means that PHP goes on and on in the acronym. And that's a bit strange, but fair play for making the acronym recursive. Not many technologies do that. But essentially, PHP is just a server-side scripting language that allows us to create dynamic websites. Now, it runs on the server and not directly in a browser. So I'm assuming you already understand how to make a static website with HTML, uh, CSS, and maybe a bit of JavaScript as well. If not, be sure to check out those playlists. I'll leave the link down below. But anyway, when you create a static HTML website with some CSS and JavaScript, all of that HTML, all of that CSS and JavaScript, all of that code you write runs inside a web browser right here. Now, PHP doesn't do that. It runs on a server over here. So for example, we could visit a website URL in the browser. And when we hit enter, that sends a request to whatever server is hosting that website. And it's here on the server that the PHP code will run. Now, at this point in our PHP code, we could compile a dynamic HTML template and then send that back to the browser, which we'll then see in the browser, okay? Now, at some other point, after we get that HTML page in the browser and we're browsing the website, we could fill in some kind of form and then submit that form. Now, when we click that submit button, it will send another request to the server. And at this point on the server, we could have some PHP code to take that data that a user's typed in and save that to a database. And then once we've done that, we could send back another compiled HTML template, like a success page to the browser. So this is the general idea of using a server side language like PHP to run code on the server, which we couldn't always do directly in a browser. So we'll be learning how to do all of this and more in this playlist. So we'll start off in the next video, first of all, by setting up PHP on our computer and looking at a few of the tools that we'll be using as well. And after that, we're gonna dive right into the basics of PHP and how to create PHP files. Then when we get comfortable with all the basics, we're gonna look at how we can render dynamic content in our HTML templates using PHP. Then we'll look at how we can communicate with a MySQL database and save stuff in the database, then retrieve it later on. 
Then we'll talk about sessions and cookies and all that kind of stuff. And finally, we'll have a look at objects and classes in PHP as well, and maybe even a couple of the newer PHP 7 features as well. So by the end of this course, you should be able to make a project that looks a little bit like this. So the website is called Ninja Pizza, and it's basically just a simple little website where you can add new pizzas, read about pizzas, and delete pizzas, because after all, who doesn't like pizza? Okay, so you can see right here we've got three pizzas listed. They're all being stored in a database, a MySQL database, and we can see the name, the ingredients, we can click more information to see who created it, when it was created it, and we can also delete them right here as well. So if I say delete, it's going to remove that from there. I can add new pizzas as well, so if I go to email, I'll say mario at the net ninja.co.uk and then the pizza title is going to be the Mario Supreme. We're going to add on tomato, cheese and mushrooms. Click submit and we'll see that right here as well. Okay, so that's what we're going to be creating once we've learned the basics of PHP as we go through this course. Now for this course, I'm going to be using Sublime Text as my text editor. For some reason, whenever I start to use PHP, I always go back to Sublime Text. I guess it's because this is what I always used to use for PHP in the past, so it could be a nostalgia thing, but you're free to use whatever you want, whether it's Atom or VS Code or Sublime, entirely up to you. If you do want to download Sublime Text, you can get it at sublimetext.com. Now, I'm also supplying all of the course files for this playlist. You can find them at this GitHub repo right here. The link is going to be down below. Now, this is important. I've done a separate branch for each lesson. So if you want to see the code for lesson, I don't know, 20, for example, you need to go to the branch drop down and select lesson 20. Otherwise, you won't see that code. And the code is all here. OK, so there we go, my friends. That is your course introduction and your introduction to PHP as well. I really, really hope you enjoy this playlist. If you do like the videos, my friends, don't forget to share, subscribe and like, and I'm going to see you in the very next video.